Yeah, go on. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Sure. So, uh, uh, welcome to uh, the tenth week of this of this course. Let me just do a quick recap, like what all we have done till date. So what we have done, we have covered ascendant. We have spoken about zodiac signs and planets. Obviously with the context of Vedic astrology, uh, we have discussed the planet rulers of different zodiac signs. For example, if it is Aries, the ruler is Mars. Then we have classified the zodiac signs with respect to three different parameters, that is element, quality, and gender. And then we discussed about the Kala Porsche chart. And uh, then we spoke about ascendant characteristics and their key features. Uh, besides that, uh, we also discussed about the basic properties of planets. Okay, how does different planet impact different aspects of our life? Uh, uh, I'm sorry I was not present in the last session because of some personal reasons. And I understand that we have also discussed how to get Lagna chart from Astro stage and how to interpret that. So what we are going to discuss in today's session is about uh, Shad, Shad Bala. Okay, so as the, num as the name suggests, Shad means six. So six different ways of calculating the strength of the planet. Now, as it reads here, Shadbala signifies the strength of the planet, which quantifies the planetary effect. Okay, so each planet has got different strength in a given native chart. So now all of you, as I understand, have the access to either yours or your family's uh, Lagna chart. And we will be discussing with respect to that Lagna chart only that what is the strength of each planet in a given uh, Lagna chart or ascendant chart. So I'll repeat because this is important that what is the strength of each planet in a given ascendant chart? And uh, what will be the its planetary effect? Please stop me if you think uh, I'm fast or I'm not audible. Let me get on to next slide, which gives you, you know, these concepts in a particular, you know, format, which very clearly talks about the planet. And there are two parts of it, Shadbala and auspiciousness. Now, Shadbala is something which gives us its quantitative measure. Okay, so it will give you a number saying that this is the strength of the planet, whether it is 10, whether it is 20, 30, 40, etc, etc. And uh, auspiciousness is something qualitative, uh, which we have to understand as, you know, as we interpret or as we understand. Okay. So how auspicious a particular planet is in a given ascendant chart. Uh, I'll just, you know, stop here and invite Venkat. Venkat, if you can uh, please talk about this and what we are going to cover. 
today. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me ask first, has anyone understood what has been told about Shadbala? Or any idea that you were able to form based on this? In the birth chart, actually, we see a lot of planets and with the number, actually, when we generate it. So, uh, this okay. quantifies what this planet's strength or something based on that number. No, no. That number is the angle it has covered in the specific zodiac sign. That is nothing okay. to do with strength. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Anyone else? Any inputs? Maybe is it referring its own place, one house, or the house which where it gets more power? Okay. Yeah. So what we are discussing is <clears throat> we are um, in some way trying to quantify the strength that we receive in terms of the radiation of the planet okay with respect to earth since we are now astrology is completely based on geocentric model that means earth is at the center not the sun so what happens maybe i'll just give a uh, brief on how generally everybody is familiar with gunas right sattva rajas and tamas yes let me maybe you can then appreciate this better Okay, now, oh, sorry, I want to use a whiteboard. I'll close my video because it, this sharing slows, uses a lot of bandwidth. <coughs> okay, now, I won't take too much time because, yeah, so we, everyone knows this, right? Sattva. Uh, yes. Okay. Now it's visible. Yes, yes, now it's loaded. Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. Tamas. And we all know that Sattva is, uh, is like purity or goodness, right? Why it's not writing properly? It has to do with Purity, goodness, Rajas has to do with activity. Uh, I request everyone to switch off their videos. Maybe it's the bandwidth for me. Yeah, including Gaurav, if you can, because then the writing would come properly. Okay, this is purity, this is activity. Then this is inactivity. But how this is related to planets, so I'll just tell. Now, <clears throat> and this, in other words, means non-stop or continuous motion. If we consider uh, heliocentric, that means if sun is at the center, then the planets will, basically they are all following sattva in case of sun at the center because they are set in motion, they are keep on going on the same, same way. Okay. But since we are in the geocentric, okay, then what happens is Earth at the center, it doesn't go in uniform motion. Sometimes it's accelerating, sometimes decelerating, sometimes there's no light coming from it. So it the planets 
planets uh, when it is geocentric planets get equated to these modes as well that's the connection there when you have changes in speeds acceleration deceleration sometimes like new moon so you can't see at all so all those things make them into this that's kind of a relationship with mm -hmm. their auspiciousness they like uh, that okay that's the connection there mr venkat i have a question when you say it mm -hmm. is it is this what is what do you mean with this that is rajas and tamas or just tamas where when when it's a geocentric yeah both both so when there is acceleration and deceleration then it is rajas okay that is considering from the earth as the center yeah when it is for example when it is not visible itself it is like considered inactive like that <laughs> okay this is i'm just trying to give a kind of uh, overview of how these qualities are related to it okay and also the clarity that geocentric uh, makes these planets have deceleration acceleration all those things but if it's considered sun as the center then they are always in the same uniform kind of motion okay now what happens <laughs> now that you know that uh, there are different just like the lunar faces the planets also will have faces because earth is at the center so when for example you have more the sun the planets are exactly opposite to the sun then you'll have more radiation from that planet so you find that the strength is more because it's brighter just like the moon for example saturn or jupiter anything that's exactly opposite to the sun we'll see more of it more brightness more of the light reflecting from that planet to earth so in that same manner we have other ways of calculating uh, or receiving strength from planets okay there are other things which will be described by gaurav in the subsequent slides so the position with respect to sun that is just one way of um assessing the strength of the radiation we receive there are other things also like exaltation or you know uh uh will come later actually in course about digbala okay directional strength so those things will also be needed to for assessing the strength of the planet so i i'll hand it over to gaurav uh yes venkat can you see my screen yes okay <coughs> so thanks for that explanation i i think that has given a good context to our discussion today so let me go to the different aspects okay so interpreting uh what we call as the planetary spaciousness how do we do that so you will see there are multiple points on this slide and uh, uh what we are talking about exaltation as point number 1 distance from the sun and the combustion east and kasht fall planetary friendship and dignity vim sopaka 
स्तोपक सॉरी बाल विशेष काउंट वर्गोत्तम वर्गोत्तम वर्ग उत्तम पॉइंट रेट्रोग्रेशन देन अष्ट अष्टक वर्ग एंड यू नो देर आर अदर प्लेनेटरी कंडीशन विच बेसिकली डिसाइड्स अबाउट द ऑस्पिशियसनेस ऑफ अ प्लैनेट इन ए गिवेन ascendant chart so i'll repeat again so what we are discussing today is the strengths of the planets in a given chart so in a particular given chart the sun may be very strong planet as compared to maybe mercury or maybe mars okay now exaltation also i think we have touched upon when we were talking about the planets in a class uh on 21st of january uh when we are talking about exaltation basically the planet has got a strength okay it is a stronger if it is in a given zodiac sign okay the second point talks about distance from sun okay so what will be the strength of a given planet if it is very close to sun or if it is away from the sun if it is directly impacted by the sun etc etc okay we will get into the details as we proceed the next point is talk talked about ist and kasht phala like each planet has got obviously two types of attributes ist like the beneficial aspects and obviously uh the kasht phal basically where you know we have some hardships in the life uh another point is pl planetary friendships and dignity so there are a lot of planets uh which are friends to each other and there are planets which are not friends to each other uh then we will be talking about the other aspects also but maybe in the next sessions okay for example when we are talking about retrogression that is a planet appears to be retrograding that is like we must have heard about uh, many times the astrologers talk about this particular planet is in vakri vakri state okay in hindi so it is this is what is called retrogression okay now the if you look at the point number 9 as astak varga so astak varga is again a technique where we take you know where we talk about only eight eight particular points that is the seven actual planets we do not take into account the shadow planets that is rahu and ketu and we also take into account the ascendant zodiac sign and with the help of whatever the interpretation or strength comes in that is what exactly we will it is covered in ast astak varg astak means eight eight properties in a given chart and so on and so forth okay uh let me just get on to the next one now we spoke about exaltation so planet exhibits most superior and auspicious qualities at a fixed point in the zodiac is known as the point of deep exaltation so exaltation degrees are different for every planet so when we discuss about the planets and we said if particular planet is in a particular zodiac sign it gets exalted but now it further qualifies it as yes, the exaltation will be very very deep in case it is at a particular degree in given zodiac sign or in the given house let me get on to this uh the tabular format which talks about if sun is in aries it is exalted and the degree of deep exaltation will be if it is at 10 degree so the asc ascendant charts which you have got there there is a number appearing there uh with each planet the number actually talks about the degree at which the uh, particular planet is given in a particular zodiac sign so if sun is at 10 degree and is present in the aries sign 
okay then it will have a deep exaltation so you will get the benefits of sun maximum benefits of sun if it is in aries and if it is at 10 degrees now in a particular because the, there are 12 uh, zodiac signs and each zodiac sign gets you know uh, a space of 30 degrees so it's from 0 to 30 degree so when a particular planet enters a zodiac sign it is at 0 then gets into 1 2 3 and 30 and then after 30 it moves on to the next zodiac sign so if you look at moon okay moon exalts in taurus at 3 degrees at 3 degrees we get a deep exaltation uh, mars does it in capricorn at 28 degrees mercury in virgo at 15 degrees we get the maximum or deep exaltation venus if it is available or if it is present in a given ascendant chart in pisces or mean rashi uh, mean zodiac sign then it is exalting but if it is at 27 degree that is where we get the deep exaltation jupiter in cancer exalts at five degrees where it has got a maximum exaltation saturn in libra exalts which is a uh, maximum at 20 degrees okay so let's look at if mercury is in virgo sign and it is at 15 degrees that is almost in the middle point of a given zodiac sign it gives the maximum or deep exaltation okay so i think all of you, if you have your charts in front of you, you can always have a look and you can find out whether any of the planets are exalting in a given ascendant chart. Uh, Venkat, if you can please add to what I said. Yeah, yeah. So I think what is to be understood is that at this specific degree, it becomes really strong. That means the results are more effective in these specific degrees. As the planets move away from these degrees on these specific signs, the results will be less effective. Uh, I think it's better if you can open your birth chart and check if any of you have these planets in the mentioned zodiac signs if any of you have can you please speak up here mr ram We need to open our chart, right? And then look at yes, these. Yes, okay, yes. Okay. I think it's better if I... Yeah, I have here. Saturn and Libra. Okay, okay. Okay, but let's do it this way <clears throat> so that there's no confusion. So everyone, I hope you all of you have it open now, your birth charts. Look for sun. Does anyone have in either Aries or Libra the okay. sun where, in your chart? Where am I looking? In, in the Lagna chart or... Uh... Lagna chart. In the Lagna chart, I should look for sun. Which sign, uh, whether it is, if it is in Aries or Libra, please tell. Mm. No. Actually, my Aries doesn't have anything. <laughs> okay. Libra as well? Uh, obviously, Libra is... Um, Libra, I have... Um, it says any -E and SA. Yeah, that is Saturn and Neptune. Okay. Yeah. So Saturn, we'll come to that later. Let's discuss one by one. So Sun, anyone has in Aries or Libra? Yeah, hello. Yeah. My son is in Aries. Sir. Your good name? Aruna. Okay, okay. Sun is in Aries. Yeah. Do you see the number below Sun in that, in the chart? Oh. Yeah, just a minute, yeah. Is it possible to just open one chart and then take a look just yeah, yeah. to explain? That will be much helpful. 
Sure. I'll do that. Okay. Uh, let's uh, finish with that. Are you asking uh, the house in which house that sun is? No, no. In which zodiac sign it is? No, after no, that, when no, no, the no. number asking asked... if sun is in Aries or Libra. Yeah, and, and after... hmm. the degree so... you see. Okay. The number. So mine is in sun Aries, uh, but it says degree fifteen. Fifteen. Degree That's pretty yeah. close to exaltation. So... Exaltation degree is ten. So as I, I presume SU stands for sun, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So I'll, I'll show a chart number. here. So before right. that, I just wanted some inputs. Yeah. So mine is yeah. in Pisces and it's 19. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not a debilitation or exaltation. Yeah, yeah the... Venkat, uh, it's Aruna again. Uh, yeah. The number is 13. 13, 1, 3. 1, 3, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's very close to exaltation. Okay. Okay, anyone has moon in either Taurus or Scorpio? Mine is in moon with Taurus and the degree is 26 degrees. Okay, that's pretty far away from the exaltation. What I mean by asking Scorpio is that's the exact opposite. Come again. They're not here. Okay. I'll I'll sh better to show it on a chart and then discuss. Oh, thank you. Venkat, are you going to share? Yeah. So should I yeah, stop yeah. sharing? You, 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 you carry on. I have to open that here. Uh, so when I'm ready, exaltation let you know. means basically it is an impact. Now, impact can be either direction, right? Or it talks about only one-sided impact when you're saying it's a deep impact based on the degree. Yeah, it is. The strength is maximum when it is in this specific degree, in this specific sign. Okay. Uh, Venkat, uh, but why are you saying to check both Aries and like Libra? Yeah. yeah, because Libra is exact opposite to Aries. So if Sun is in Libra, that means it's debilitated. You have the opposite effect oh, at okay. the same degree. If Sun is in 10 degrees in Libra, then it's in the weakest. Okay. If Sun is in 10 degrees in Libra. Yeah. I'll open and show in a okay. chart. I'm just trying to fetch it. Meanwhile, uh, Gaurav, you can carry on. Carry yeah, on. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So I'll get, get to the next slide now. Okay. Then the next point, if if I go back to this, you can see first was exaltation, uh, which we discussed, and now the point number two is distance from the sun, and that is what we are going to discuss now. So distance from sun. When a planet is exactly opposite of the sun. It is visible for the greatest number of hours during the 24 hours. In other words, the planet is visible during the entire night time. This is considered to make the planet most auspicious. Okay. On the other hand, an exact conjunction with the sun is least auspicious. Due to the overwhelming amount of light of the sun, the planet is not visible at all, not at the day and not at the night. So these are, you know, this is now what we are doing is I keep repeating it. Okay, please bear with me that what we are trying to discuss is how auspicious a planet is in a given native's Lagna chart. Okay, ascendant chart. So, so if we take the second pointer, which is distance from the sun. So if it is exactly opposite of the sun, it is visible for the greatest number of hours during the 24 hours so look look from the visibility perspective so the planet will be also visible in the night time the entire night time so it will be considered very very auspicious so and on the reverse side 
if it is on a conjunction with sun okay because obviously sun gives us life energy lot of light so the planet becomes invisible so that is not so auspicious for that planet or the auspiciousness of that planet in our chart gorav have a question yes magi so no when you say it is opposite to sun means at least from the earth if you see right from the earth you are seeing from the earth right one side you have sun the exact opposite direction that is the planet right that's what you need be opposite to sun right yes 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 yeah yeah it's just and like the... full moon similar to that okay yeah mm -hmm. so and same side it means at least both are in the same direction so at least sun will overpower that in terms of uh, they will not see the planet mostly yes there's no Absolutely radiation to it. earth yes. hmm. Uh, but how this is represented in the bar chart? Yeah, I'll show that. So now let me share. So I am going to share Rishi Sunak chart. Okay. Now I don't know if any of you have already seen his chart. So if you see, can yes, someone tell me which yeah. planet? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. now it's seen second you are on it when did i go on mute okay i was asking can anyone anyone identify which planet is exalted here sun sun, sun, sun is exalted sun in aries exactly sun is in aries but this does not show degrees so i will come to that later so sun is exalted <laughs> there is no other planet which is exalted or debilitated so when the sun is in libra that is let me use this okay so when we have here sun is exalted this is exalted exact opposite that is seventh house from it will be sun is debilitated okay then moon is exalted here taurus and moon will be exactly opposite side opposite house that is seven houses apart moon will be debilitated You and what is this it. one where moon is debilitated what is that this is scorpio sign? scorpio okay this is libra moon is exalted yeah. taurus okay then uh in cancer we have jupiter exalted so exact opposite jupiter is debilitated in capricorn capricorn so when when do you have these degrees for example you mentioned about the degrees right so for example mine is moon in taurus sun in aries jupiter in cancer yes, yes. yeah so wherever the planets are positioned like this in the chart you have to check if they are in the specific sign and then you have to check the degrees also okay okay uh, when could you explain sorry the 30 degrees what you had said earlier yeah yeah so what the 30 degrees means each zodiac sign is having value from 0 to 30 degrees okay starting always in the clock always movement is in the clockwise direction okay so every time when we say let's say if supposing the sun here was let's say exalted exactly 10 degrees that means it is from the beginning to from this side to this side 10 degrees One is what point. yeah from okay. the earth at the center earth is center in our astrology so if you see from the earth in that zodiac sign that is in the aries sign 
the angle is 10 degrees from the beginning of Aries constellation. Like that. Okay. Yeah. So similarly, every sign is 0 to 30, always in the okay. clockwise direction. So, so, so what happens, you know, if it crosses 10 degrees, it does does it start uh, uh, debilitating or is it uh, the power is gone? Or... <laughs> no, it's not gone. <laughs> Uh, it it's just reduces, reduces. Okay. reduces. Yeah. So its maximum power is from zero to In, ten degrees. Not zero, exact ten degrees. At exact ten. Either degrees. way, it's going to reduce. Okay. So yeah, it yeah. increases from zero to ten, reaches its peak at ten, and then start reducing. You can't say it begins in, uh, increasing from zero. Okay, but in general, in this sign, in Aries. It's going to be stronger than other signs like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But maximum is here. But this is only one criteria. There are other things we'll see later, like directional strength and all those things. But for now, if you just understand that there is a specific degree where it is more in power, that's sufficient. And also, exact opposite, if the same 10 degrees here, if you have sun, it is at its weakest. Okay. So to take an example, like those who have sun in this Libra with 10 degrees, generally they'll need a lot of push to do things. Okay. <laughs> so they, it's like battery problem in car. So you need to really push the car, make it start like that. Okay. But supposing it is here, exalted, they'll be completely on their own, self-initiative, always proactive like that. Okay, that's the difference you'll see in terms of the personality. Just giving one example for Sun. So, Let me so complete the list. One question. Yeah. One question. So if you say like Sun and um, Aries, that's exalted. Mm -hmm. So the same, every planet is the seventh one, it is deliberated, is it? So exactly opposite yes, yes. one. That's true for yes. every every planet, right? So moon is yeah, yeah. exalted in Taurus means uh, it's yes. deliberated in Scorpio. So okay, in Scorpio, in the same exact degree. That means one eighty degrees but apart. In general, degree. the degrees hmm. because the last time when you are talking about we said exalted in Aries, exalted in Taurus, but in general, it, in that uh, sun sign, it will be in that thing, it will be uh, in general have exaltation, right? But higher exaltation yes. at that specific degree. Yeah, if you say sun is in Aries, by default, it's better than, more strong than, supposing in the previous one, Pisces. Okay, like that. Okay. okay. But within this Aries, highest is in this specific degree. Okay. Okay. And similarly, when it is in Libra, it is debilitated in compared to yes. other Rashis. Yes. Specifically at 10, it is worst. Yes. At the 10, it's the weakest. That's exact. Okay. Good. Now, let me try to complete this. So, here, while Jupiter is exalted, Mars is debilitated. Okay. So, compared to the table, visually, if you see, it will make better sense. So, here, Mars is exalted. Capricorn, same. Then, we'll come here, Virgo. Here, you'll find... Uh, How about Leo? Leo, there's nothing. Mm. Here, Pisces, Venus exalted. Here, Venus debilitated. That means... Vankaj, you say you're saying Venus in Pisces is exalted. Yes, yes, Pisces. Okay. Here, then opposite, Mercury is exalted. In Pisces, Mercury is debilitated. Then we are left with Saturn. Saturn is again same Aries and Libra. In Libra, Saturn is exalted. And in Aries, Saturn is debilitated. Think of what you, if you have. Uh... Uh, you know, Mercury and Venus, like for example in Pisces, what does it mean? It has both exalted and... Yes. So Venus, what a Venus represents that is exalted, what Mercury represents that is debilitated. Okay. Yeah. 
Venkat, I think Mars is exalted in Capricorn as well, right? Yes, I mentioned here. Ah, so I've yes. covered yeah. all the physical planets. Rahu and Ketu, they were not, uh, they are, I think, not given in that table. So Rahu is exalted in this Taurus. That is 20 degrees here, opposite Ketu. Ketu exalted. What it also means is Rahu debilitated here. Ketu debilitated in Taurus, like that. Okay. So I think you lost me a little bit. You know, is it possible for you to... I mean, I understood what you said about Taurus and um, uh, um, uh, Libra. But yeah. uh, then um, I went through, you know, Taurus is fine. and But later on, there's nothing here in Capricorn. Or can, sorry, in Cancer. Cancer. Yeah. But you still said there is a, a Jupiter, Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. If it is present, that is, if it is. I'm just mentioning where the planet is exalted. That's it. In this specific chart, it's not. It's no more Rishi Sunak. I mean, it is just. Okay, okay. Jupiter this. is yeah. exalted in Cancer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. And, just um, so that visually you can see it's better than simply table. Hmm. Okay, there is nothing for Leo. No, no, nothing for no this thing here. Okay, same thing, nothing for Aquarius. And nothing yeah. for Gemini. Nothing for Sagittarius. There are four houses. We don't have anything. Yeah. Not houses, signs to be precise. Yeah. Uh, Venkat, if, if somebody's bar chart doesn't have any of these planets in the mentioned location, so we don't have any... Uh, Exalted yeah. or debilitated. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are other things that will be covered uh, okay. later. Yeah. But for now, mm -hmm. th this is giving some clarity, right? Don't worry. You don't need. You can't remember everything. Just you are getting familiar with the topic. That's 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 enough right now. I have one question, not related yeah. to this, but uh, from the previous concepts. So when we have houses and uh, these planets uh, and zodiacs. Uh, we say that uh, the planets are owners of uh, houses or zodi zodiacs. I mean, we they say are that owners AD... of si zodiac signs. Yeah. Zodiacs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like, but that is also there. What you're saying is karakas. Okay, that is separate. That will come later. Uh, right now, if you understand, planet having lordship of a specific sign or so many most many of them have. Two except sun and moon, rest have two two signs uh, as their uh, house. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think I'll hand it back to Gaurav. What does it, uh, Venkat, what does it mean? Like, for example, when people said that, a lot of people said that they have. Uh, planets right and they are all exalted so what does exactly that mean um okay for someone or how do you say why does it talk about personality and what yes, if somebody has a lot of these right so how can you treat that as a... yeah each yeah. planet defines a per per particular personality in a particular zodiac sign you see uh, what the planets are present that we covered in a previous class right. so the um uh, those characteristics will be, you know, more prominent or enhanced when they are exalted okay. and the opposite when they are debilitated. Yeah. Okay. So like I gave example for sun <laughs> like that. Uh, suppose the moon is debilitated in Scorpio. Then usually the person will be uh, pessimistic or hesitant like that because moon is mind. So that gets kind of weakened. But opposite will be when moon is in Taurus. Okay. Then that uh, that person will be really, you know, very sparkling kind of personality like that. Okay. That's the kind of effect we, we usually get. Like similarly, if Jupiter is in Capricorn, then the person's discriminative power will be weakened. They might get easily fooled, can be easily duped like that. That is seen. Okay.
and and this position is only at the time that our lagna chart what is the position right does it, because these kids this planets keep moving right in, in the normal phase yeah, this, this is birth chart static chart yeah. at the time of the birth wherever the positions are uh, yeah yeah the planets are in which zodiac sign and which degrees defines the personality based on yes yes okay so okay let me give this perspective you need to have this perspective so opposing i have <clears throat> i think i can't show it now. one second no? gaurav i'll just show this once sure sure let's say i'm having a beaker again going back to chemistry how much is this how much full is it half full half full half full of empty so half 50% of what you see of a person will be based on the birth or lagna chart okay that means whatever is the static picture then i'll take this much of it okay this 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 is 40% will be on the dashas planetary dashas these are defined phases of our life okay we have some things called planetary periods so but this will not be in first year it will come in second year then what are we left with only 10% 10% is only the real time data that means planet transits okay that's the real time movement so this should give you an idea of how much importance we need to give to the static picture and real time i know movement. i planted the sense what you uh, talked about venkat ji i have a quick query over here tejas panchal yeah yeah so what i see or uh, understand from this picture is hmm. 50% is what we are born Forty hmm. percent yeah. is planetary dasha, and ten hmm. percent is uh, movements or transit which are happening yeah. in real time. Right now, right. real so, time, correct. Whatever my behavior, attitude, uh, knowledge, whatever it is, so fifty percent is static. It will remain as it is. No, the those that means this is more about. <laughs> your natural let's say talents inclinations or health issues okay which are mostly they'll remain same only because you cannot really uh, like so, people have natural inclination for writing okay so those things some things we are really born with already that's kind of our nature okay so that's what it is mostly it's not going to change in our lifetime so that's the okay. reason maximum so, uh, is in this case so the ascendant um, hmm. which i am born with the degree yeah. i am born with it is going to remain as it is and yeah. the things which yeah. are going to come with that particular degrees will remain same yeah yeah like some people are born slim okay so that's the those things are all <clears throat> by nature by birth certain things are determined which largely will not change so and that really determines almost everything including your real time thing right so like for example my voice quality it's not going to change so things mostly will be based on this only 10% only is based the real time things that's happening yeah okay i hope this perspective gives you good idea over to gaurav
I have a question, uh, uh, Venkat. I yeah. want to ask, is it possible that uh, few planets are exalted in a birth chart? Four planets, like, oh, it's, it's not like that. Usually, we don't find so many. Usually, it's only one. Yeah. Or debilitated for the yeah. just for an example, just yeah, one yeah. usually. Because only in a sign, either there is maximum two planets, and that two only one will be exalted, or the other will be debilitated. You can't have because you have seen the table, right? So in a specific sign, we can maximum have one exaltation or one debilitation or both together. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, one more, question. more yeah. question. This uh, this ascendant lagna is different from the Rashi that we give, right? For example, the big that like for example, we say born on this Natchatra, Ashwini, Barani. That because that Rash that is different from the ascendant lagna. That, right? is, ascendant lagna. that is referring to moon wherever the moon is placed. That is moon sign. The usual Rashi that we speak of is actually the placement of the moon. Okay. Ascendant so is has... different. Yeah. So that has not much of value, is it? In that sense, the moon sign. That is also okay. having value. We'll cover in the second year about nakshatras. Okay. Yeah. That is usually okay. for more micro level detail. Okay. It's not really needed. This is enough. Ascendant and sun sign and the other planetary positions. That's what we see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me now talk about uh, East Fall and Kast Fall. So these are the measuring terms for two that are used to calculate. Sorry, one more question. So one more question. The previous the distance from the sun, uh, uh, again at the time of our birth, if if a planet is opposite to the sun, right, rather from from their point of view, then that is what, or or then it is more powerful. That's what that means, right? Yes, yes, correct. As more impact. Yes. So, so in a Lagna like chart, if we see any 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 planet on the or the on opposite or so that seventh position from the sun, then they have the greater impact on our life. Yeah, but that comes into picture when <clears throat> we are talking about the dashas. Yeah. Okay. More effective for planetary dashas. Okay. Hmm. That is kind of in between day-to-day -day real time and birth static. That is in between because our life is divided into different planetary planetary dashas. Okay, so that means after it's like for example, of for some years we'll have for example Saturn like seventeen years. Then we have something for nineteen years like that. So it the life is divided into some stages with the number of years assigned for specific planets like that. So when we have, let's say I have Saturn, I'm undergoing Saturn Dasha. That means if I look at the placement of Saturn with respect to sun in my birth chart, I can say that if it is exactly opposite to the sun, then the effect will be more when I am in the Saturn Dasha. Okay, that's what it means. Sorry, what, you, what is the Dasha? What does it mean that I'm undergoing Saturn Dasha? What yeah, that's mean? not that will not be discussed. That's in second year, so let's not bring okay. in. Uh, can you just okay. predict that in the picture in terms of, for example, or like when you can you go back? May, to, I'm sorry to interrupt. May I know? Uh, uh, what is this? Uh, what is the name of Ecolite Digital? Name of the person? Yeah, this is Vipin Gupta. I'm just saying. Sorry. Sorry. What's your name? Good name. Vipin Gupta. Vipin Gupta. Okay. I just if you can predict that exactly what you're trying to say in the second slide about sun, um, you know, it is opposite. What does it mean as a graphical representation, right? A small diagram, which, like, if it is, uh, you know, I'm not able to understand the concept completely. What yeah. you're saying, yeah, okay. Gaurav, I also had the same question. If you can go back to the previous slide, the, the, the text of it is a little bit. No, no, yeah, this one. When a pla planet is exactly opposite, okay, that I am, I can understand. But on the other hand, an exact uh, conjunction with the sun, uh, what does that mean? Conjunction. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, let me share that. I think and Gaurav... Jason, maybe next to the sun. Yeah, yeah, I'll just come. Can somebody answer? Let, let them answer, you know. When I get too many answers, you know, from it, it's very confusing. Let the, let the teachers yeah. teach. Okay. So now you can see here Rishi's chart. So we have sun in Aries, right? This is Aries. Oh, let me just write here. So Aries. So what the text meant is like Venus is two houses away. And if you see Jupiter, Jupiter is one, two, three, four, five, right? This is five houses away from this. And when we have a planet here, this is seven houses away. And this is what is exact opposite of sun. Okay. That means as the planets move from here, they are moving away from sun and this is exact opposite. Here we will have maximum light from planet. That is seventh house from the sun. So we always have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventh is always the opposite. We always count the initial house also. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So always seventh is opposite. In any yeah. any sign you take, seventh is opposite. Okay. So what it means is supposing sun is here, exact seventh is where the planet will be the brightest. Brightest. Because okay. it has the maximum light that we can see from Earth. So here if you see Venus is less bright, but these planets are more bright. Supposing these planets were here in seven, they'd be the brightest. So that's why here the more strength is associated with those planets which are exactly opposite to the sun. Okay. Now what is in conjunction? What is that? Conjunction means it? like here moon and mercury. They are with the sun. We will get very, very less light of moon and mercury because they are together with the sun. It's as good as new moon. So the effect is minimal. When they are conjunction means together with uh, sun. Okay. What so if they don't. Get, so they don't get any light, moon and uh, Mercury. Yeah, yeah. That's how the lunar faces, right? So if if they are, uh, if they say this is Earth, okay. Here is Sun. If the moon is here, the entire Sun's light comes falls. The moon the is moon. here. Okay. Yeah. So for the earth, there is nothing reflecting from the moon because there is nothing. It's all right. dark, this side. Right, right. But whereas if the moon is here, the entire sun's light falls on this. So this entire thing is visible for us as a full moon. Okay, this is earth. Now you understand. If it yeah. is opposite to the sun, we get full moon like that. For any planet, full thing we'll see. But if it is here, we only see the dark side of it. No, nothing no. seen. That's what is the meaning of it. So here we are having uh, conjunction. Here it is opposite to sun. That's the difference. I hope it's clear now. Yeah, it is. And it doesn't matter if it is 1, 2, 3. What if we have planets and 12 thumbs? Uh, then also it is when it, what if we have a planet on the 12th house? So if you go to 12th, right? Uh, yeah, 12th means just one away from sun. So it will be almost so we count the same way. Okay. Yeah, it will yeah. be closer to the sun. It will be somewhere here. So you'll see a portion of it, like a crescent moon. Okay, like that. You'll see a portion right. of it. So yeah. it's basically, basically it's a reflection of light physics. So as you go here, the brightness increases. Like that. Uh, the seven, we should count clockwise and anti clockwise. It's the seven clockwise. of. Always clockwise. All planets are physical planets clock clockwise. Only Rahu and Ketu go anti clockwise. Okay. No, if a, uh, if a planet is in the uh, house 10, 
Uh, and yeah, yeah, we always go this way. So it's house 10 is here, then its planet is here, 10th. Okay, so it's... So it has crossed 7th, so brightness less. Basically, here also less, but it is increasing. Opposite maximum, okay. then it is decreasing this way. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think Gaurav will have to close the class here only today. Gaurav, you there? I am here. Already uh, 4.35 now. Yeah. Okay. So we should close the uh, session now. But whatever we'll feedback we have mm -hmm. to take, please do that. Yeah, yeah. So I hope you found it useful. Anyway, the feedback will be there. Yeah, very useful. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things to be learned today, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of and it's um, relatively... Um, more cumbersome than usual, you know. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. Uh, the picturization that you are talking, uh, you know, for every thing that you talked about, actually based on the planets, planet, that is helping us to understand what yeah, yeah, the text yeah, means. We need that. Yeah, visual always is better. Okay, I received eight responses. Especially for we engineers. <laughs> picture, oh, yeah. a, a picture is worth thousand words. Thousand correct, words. correct, absolutely yeah. right. Actually, yeah, after you I'm start looking at the survey. chart, it becomes more interesting. I think it is already interesting for us when we started mm -hmm. looking at our charts and trying to relate what it means. Because, and is this the same uh, while people are submitting? A lot of people in north side say they, these planets are uchka, like uch or niche. Is it the same that we are talking about? Like yes, when they yes, are, yes, yeah. Bipen, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but for most of the people tell astrology based on this the moon actually where where the moon is on that zone. But uh, we go with the uh, ascendant level. Is, is it yeah. true? Moon is basically focusing on the mind only. So Ascendant talks about our physical structure and uh, the sun will talk about our purpose, our soul, our engine. So these are all uh, different aspects. We need to see all of them together. Okay. okay. The nakshatra based thing is for more minute detail finding it's not not really even required I, i'm doing uh i've done so many chart analysis i don't even look at nakshatra we get already we get so much information even without that when does the poll is over now polls 28 people have done i'll close it here because i can't see today the poll so oh you can't okay so I'm sharing the results. <coughs> so 28 out of 29, 97%. They say meeting pace was fine. One says it was too fast. I feel I learned something today. That's 100%. Activity was engaging. 28 out of 29. One says do not interest. Topics in general, all hard says one person. All easy say seven, partially hard rest easy say 21. Audio quality, very good, well audible, 26 out of 29. Three say good and audible most of the time. Okay, thank you for this feedback. And any any questions or shall we close it here? Uh, I just wanted to ask what would be the positive aspects if moon is in Taurus? Means will be good in speech, good in um, in your clarity of thought. Okay, that's the main thing. And Moon is in uh, Taurus. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, I have one request you know, uh, to all the attending uh, people who are attending the class. Um, I request when um, you know the instructors are you know teaching and talking, please do not interrupt them. You know until they finish their you know, speech or talk. That will be that will be of great help. Otherwise, I get to hear you know five six voices at the same time, 
and it, it's difficult to comprehend. Yes, I agree to that also. Okay, good point. Thanks. So, any, Bengit, any questions? Uh, I have a request. Venkat, I have a request. I understand mm -hmm. that uh, uh, you and Gaurav must have put in a schedule for all these things. But since we have finished uh, 10 sessions today, I was just thinking mm -hmm. that could we have just uh, one session uh, uh, just for question and answer or probably one of the sessions just half an hour dedicated. So whatever we have, we've gone through. Yeah, till the that is there. It's, we part of the, it's there in the plan. We have one class for okay. two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, then we can close it here. Thank you so much for joining today. We'll see you Thank again you next so week. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.